Hello folks, I'm back. Welcome to my channel. Before we get on with today's video, I want to thank everybody that has subscribed to this channel, past, present and future, and who's commented and shared, because I have been able to reach 15K, which I'm really pleased about. And it's interesting because a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I separated all my content. I just used to have this channel and I made other uh, two more channels for Royal Tarot readings and the vlogs and book stuff that I wanted to do with my husband. And I remember when I did it, I was like, this can go either way. This can work really well or it could backfire in a big way. And actually it's worked really well because all the channels, all the platforms have, have bounced up in their own way. And that is down to one thing and one thing only. People wanting to watch me, listen to me, spend some time with me. So thank you. And at some point, possibly next week, I'm going to have a look at doing a live on here on YouTube. And a thank you. And maybe a couple of other things. I'm just trying to see where I can plan them and fit them in. But anyway, so today's subject, so thank you. Today's subject, the idea for it came over the past couple of days when I was in London. And as with all this type of video that I do, um, it's mostly based on personal experience. So I will be sharing some of the stuff and things that I've experienced that have helped me and therefore can help you as well. We were in London and obviously you get to London and we need to get from King's Cross to, no, yeah, King's Cross to Victoria. I think you needed to use a tube. So I've not used a tube for years and we used it and it just seemed to take forever. I got really hot down there. Didn't think anything of it. Got out, enjoyed the rest of the day. Then the next day we needed to use a tube again because London, you need to use a tube. And I just got this real fear on in the hotel. I thought, I can't do it. The thought of having to go through the barriers to go down, 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 down under the ground, the heat that's down there, the speed of people walking towards me, the shuffle, the scrum. What if I get in a tube and it's round and I have to stand or I can't get on it? And I got into a real tiz. And I was like, oh, I don't want to feel this anxiety. I don't want to feel this. I'm meant to be a healer. I shouldn't be feeling anxiety. You know, what kind of an example am I, etc., etc. And in the moment, I just thought, stop, Claire. Remember that you're human. And that anxiety is a part of life. Stop trying to stop anxiety. And I was like, whoa, I'd never heard that before. Manage it rather than trying to stop it. And my guides, because it felt like it was my guide saying this, guide to yourself said, um, the minute you try to stop something, it makes it worse. So admit that you're feeling it, accept you're feeling it, be at peace with it, and then manage it, but also know that throughout the whole process you're gonna be safe. So I was like, well. So before I knew it, I was leaving the hotel, walking through London, still feeling this anxious feeling inside me, but I was doing it. And I wasn't making a big thing out of it, I was doing it. I was like, yeah, I feel really anxious. But I also knew in that moment that I wasn't the only one in the world that felt anxious. That the way the world is now, many people are feeling anxious for many different reasons. And that it was a feeling, it was a reaction to something that is actually abnormal. Because as humans, we're not meant to use the underground. We're not meant to be going underground into tunnels and fast tunnels and fast trains and the scrum and the heat and the smell and the germs that are down there. It's not normal. So my body was trying to help me. It wasn't trying to scare me. It was trying to help me. So it's not me that's abnormal. It's the situation. So I walked and I thought, okay, then Claire, remember that every step you take here, you're in charge. If you can just get as far as the barrier and that's it, it is what it is. You'll have to make another plan today, but pay at peace with that and don't beat yourself up. So I went through each stage and I got to a point where we got down and it was kind of busy and I was like, whoa. And the train pulled in and it was rather full and it was a case of if we'd have got on there, we'd have had to have stood. And I was like, 
Today I'm feeling anxious. I'm not getting on that train because it's too full. I'm going to wait. And if I miss my ticket, so be it. But I'm going to trust another train's going to come and I'm going to get on. There's going to be a seat. Lo and behold, that train went. The next one came and it was practically empty. So I got on it and I, and I love people watching and I was sat and I was watching people on there. There was that woman reading a book. Look like she's reading a book. There's nothing to be scared about. There was a young lad on his phone watching films. Look, he's watching films. There's nothing to be scared about. A couple of girls on there getting ready to go out for the day, having fun, laughing, giggling. There's nothing to be scared about. The sounds, the smell, and afterwards is quite a nice thing. It's quite an adventure going under the ground to get somewhere. Turn it around and I actually found out that I came out of the other side. I felt it. I admitted I was feeling it. I owned the fact that I was feeling it. But I came out the other side and I was like, that was so powerful than trying to stop it. Than trying to deny that it's in existence. Than trying to be 5D, which can I just say at this point is a pack of bull. I'm going to, how am I going to include it in this video? I'm, I'm gearing up to doing a video looking at the toxicity of the new age movement or aspects of it the new age awakening ascension movement that is absolutely um toxic and crazy and totally out of balance for where we are now and actually i feel it causes more harm than it does good because it's starting to put people into sections that if you're healing, you shouldn't feel this. If you're 5D, you shouldn't feel... I mean, the very fact of putting humans into 3D, 4D, 5D is actually narcissistic in itself. Um, yes, frequencies are changing and increasing, but that's always been the case. A lot of things that you're hearing out there have been taken out of context, have been manipulated and used by others for their own agendas. Whenever you get, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going off on a tangent, I'm going to go with a tangent. Whenever you get any kind of belief system like this, be it religious, be it spiritual, it opens the floodgates for fundamentalists. It opens the floodgates for narcissists to come in and to control the narrative and to use it and exploit it for their own agendas. And what you'll find is you'll start to see these people and you get beneath the surface and you realise they're actually not perfect. They're anything but. So honour your imperfection. And coming back to the anxiety thing, I will do a video on that in much broader detail at a later date. Maybe tomorrow. I'm filming it and bang it on at the end of the week. Now that I've brought it up in a video. Anyway, moving forward. Um, so I've saw so as anything like that that comes up, I sit with it and I explore it and I and I explore it further and what it's got to teach me and then what it's got to what I can bring through for videos and for sessions. And whenever you try and stop something, it makes it worse. It makes it worse. Or there's that energy of feel the fear and do it anyway, which can make it worse. It's about managing it. I don't care what anyone says. It's not about feeling the fear and doing it anyway. It's about finding a way to manage it. To manage you. To manage your reactions to the world. Not thinking I'm the only one in the world that's got anxiety or there's something wrong with me. To actually honour that you may have had a difficult life and you're going to be anxious. It's a normal reaction to pain and trauma and abuse. Money worries. Societal issues. Fear of what you're seeing in the world, the wars, the pandemic brought up lots of um, issues around health fears and fears of death, etc. So honour, honour where you're at and honour your path and honour your humility and honour the fact that you're a human being, a flesh and blood human being. And that anxiety isn't something to fear because what can happen is when we, and I've, I've been a long term anxiety suffer at different stages of my life. When we make a big thing of it, we make it bigger. Rather than just going, you know what, this is a reaction to what I've gone through in my life. To, I mean, panic attacks can be caused by the moon. Different moon phases can cause panic attacks, can increase anxiety. Um, the Schumann, geomagnetic storms, solar flares, the area that you live, the land you live on, 
the society that you're in, the people around you, the things, there's so many opportunities to get anxious now. It's beyond a joke. So admit that as well and accept that, that it's okay. I'm actually more concerned over people that are, woo, everything's wonderful, everything's amazing. I'm just, I'm 5D, but going higher and, uh, and higher. And look, I'm so high, I can't even see you all down there, plebs. That concerns me more than someone that says, I'm feeling anxious, I'm struggling with anxiety, I'm struggling with leaving the house, the world is overwhelming me. That, to me, you're a human being, so give yourself, cut yourself some slack and find a way to work with it. Not work against it, to work with it. And what you'll often find is anxiety is here to teach us to slow down. It's actually here to teach us to step back and to slow down, not to stop. So let me let me explain. Um, like I could have got up that morning and gone, I can't go. I'm not doing. I'm not doing this tube at all. I'm not doing it. I'm anxious. That's not healthy. That's not helpful. And that's just going to hold me back. And that's going to make it even bigger, because then it's going to move on to something else. Find a way to manage it. Find a way to. Not make it and not make it part of you. It is part of you, but if you've had a session with me, you'll know that I have one thing I do not like to hear, and that's when people say my anxiety, my diabetes, my epilepsy. You hear it all the time. It's like you were owning that pain and that illness because you're saying it's my my narcissist. That's what people say if they're in an abusive relationship. My narcissist, my abuser, my rape my abuse etc it's not yours it's a part of your story but it's not a part of you it's a part of your story and it's a part of what makes you the person that you are today the good the bad the ugly but it's not you so be careful what you say about it so i'm having an anxious moment not my anxiety is playing up today oh god my anxiety not doing that people do do that i've seen people do that to say I'm having an anxious moment. I'm feeling anxious in this moment. Not, I have anxiety disorder. Not, I am I am an anxious person. I'm change what you're saying to it. You're not suppressing it. You're not denying it. But you're not feeding it. And it's the way forward. It Trust me. It changes the game. And it changes things going forward for you. Let's have a slurp of tea. Um... So another example, we came to leave in London, went back down to the tube station. We didn't realise, I think it was Arsenal, Arsenal football team, female football, football team were playing. So the, the platform, the tube was rammed. And I mean rammed. First train that came, it was, you were like that on it. You were rammed. And I was like, not only were you rammed there, but you were rammed on the platform. And I was like, I can't do it can't do it and I'm not doing it and I said to my husband I said I will get a taxi I don't care how much it costs I'll get a taxi if I need to and so we said okay wait for, see what the second one the second train that comes even worse in the meantime the platform has got un, un, unavoidably crazy and chaotic and we left and we went to get a, we went to get um, a taxi and we got we got there in time just in time for the train and Again, feel the fear and do it anyway. Why? What are you going to achieve by feeling the fear and doing it anyway? You manage it. If I'd have pushed myself to go onto that tube, I mean, I don't even think I could have got it, to be honest, because we both had big cases, so I don't even think we'd have got on. Um, because, as you know yourself, humans just think toilet roll drama during the pandemic. Me, myself and I, woof, so I probably wouldn't have gone on it anyway. But if I had have done, that would have been extreme. And could I have actually got myself out of that in a healthy, balanced way? Possibly not. But what I showed myself in that moment is that actually I can read the room. I can read the room. I'm not going to push myself. I'm not going to be that type of person that's going to ram myself onto a tube because I know my self-worth. You may think, what do you mean by that? Think of your energy field as well when you're rammed in close. Think of the, all the energies in there with all those people and all that drama and 
if God forbid, and no, I'm not thinking doom and gloom, but if God forbid somebody falls or somebody goes ill, you're in a wrong, you're in a, you're in a, oh, there's an issue. So I honoured my, honoured myself more. I, I showed the fact that I've got discernment. I read the room, read the energies and made a decision. So somebody may be able to say, well, I, I couldn't afford to get a, a, a taxi in London. What if you can't afford to get a taxi in London? What if you're going to miss your train and you're going to, and you're going to have to pay for the train that's going to be extortionate? Well, I asked my guides this, and this is what they said. Plan that in your itinerary. So if you're going away, make sure you've got a pot of money where if something happens like that, you've got a choice. So you're not going away on holiday or a day out where you've got no money left. So if you don't get on that plane or that train or you don't do that at that time, that's just going to cause so much overwhelm. Give yourself choice. So whenever you do anything like that, a holiday or a day out, have a kitty of money that an emergency, not, no, not an emergency round, because emergency is, <coughs> be careful what we use words, what would we call? Um, choices fund, empowerment fund. So if you find yourself in a situation where your hotel's rubbish, you can get out. If you find yourself need, you know what I mean? So don't, so managing who you are as a person, also as well, some people are just more anxious than others. So we can go to a therapy, we can go to spiritual healing as much as we can, but we also have to be realistic with it. And we have to be realistic with who we are as a person. And we have to be honest and transparent with ourselves to stop trying to hide who we are. Not wearing it on our sleeve and, and, and using it in another, in another way which can be negative, which can be dramatic. But actually use it in a way as empowerment. I am who I am. I have, you know, I have periods where I'm more anxious than others. And I manage that. I don't let it cut me off from society and from life. But I'm not going to let it fester and take me down. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to push myself into a situation that's going to break me. And I'm not going to keep going for healing if it's not... I'm not going to keep going for healing to stop it. Because... We are humans and we, we, during this filming of this video, I, have a, I, as, I as a human have felt a whole host of things without even realising I felt it. You have watching it without even realised it, without even realising you felt, you've, you've felt them. So as a human, it's normal to feel things. Like I said, I'm more concerned for people that are walking around not feeling anything at this time. Either in it, everything's wonderful and perfect, or in a absolutely where they look absolutely empty and and it's all I call it the walking dead energy where you see it outside and they just plod plod plod. I'm more I'm I'm more anxious. I'm more anxious about them because to me that's not normal. As a human being, you're going to be full filming, feeling a range of things throughout your life, throughout your day. So stop trying to stop anxiety. Stop trying to heal it. Learn how to manage it and learn how to nurture yourself through it. So, for example, if you know that you struggle with doctors and blood tests, speak to the doctor, ring the receptionist up. You know, look at a time when you can go when it's less busy. Think of something you can do afterwards, like go for a nice coffee or meet a friend or go to the gym. Something nice. Nurture yourself throughout the process. Be loving and gentle. Treat yourself to a book that you can read on the way, a beautiful podcast, an inspirational podcast, some a nice piece of music that uplifts you. Manage it. Manage it and be honest with yourself. Don't let it overwhelm you. And again, it's practicing. It's it's finding a way. Um, so I'm going to be honest about another aspect of my life. And again, this is something I've been working on. I have an issue, I've passed my test and I can drive, but I haven't driven since. When was it? Um, it would have been 2017, no, I tell a lie. I did do a little bit of driving just before the pandemic in 2019, but I stopped. And I've always labelled myself as fear of driving. And you say to people, oh, don't you drive, Claire? And I go, I've got a fear of driving. And they'll go, oh. I have to, but I just work through it. I'm a right wreck behind the wheel. I'm going to come on to something. I'm going to come on to that in a bit. 
and I've labelled myself that for years. I've got a fear of driving. And recently I was talking to my guides and I was like getting frustrated. Done therapy, done this, done that. But I'm still not behind the wheel. And I've still got my fear of my fear of driving. And my guide said, stop calling it your fear of driving. And he said, because every time you call it that, you're mislabeling yourself with something. Number one, it's not your fear. And what he did was he broke it down for me to make it understandable. And he said, you are all different as humans. You all have different strengths and weaknesses. The matrix society says you have to drive. You have to drive to get from A to B. So you get everybody going for the driving lessons. I mean, it took me, I think, 10, 15 years to pass my test on and off. No, no, no. Honestly, even that should should be a big indication of it. Um, but because the, because the, this is the Messiah, <laughs> some people think they are at the minute, because society and the matrix think that you should be driving, that, that they make you think you should be driving. But the truth is, some people are great drivers, they're super confident. What do they call them? Um, petrol heads. <laughs> they love it, they know about cars, they're, they're cab happy. Like my dad, for example, his form of meditation is to get behind the car, car wheel, honestly. He, would, he has to drive to feel calm, whereas me, it's the opposite. Worst thing that I can think of doing right now is getting behind the wheel. Some people are really gifted at playing the violin. Some people are really, are really like adrenaline junkies and they do jump, bungee jumping, rock climbing, all kinds of things, gymnastics. Some people are great at working with lions and tigers. Some people can take blood from other people. Some people have the gift of being the surgeon and being able to operate. So why when it comes to driving do we think that everyone should be doing it and everyone can do it and everyone is good at it? And when he explained that to me, I was like, oh my God, it's not that I've got a fear. He said, it's just, I've got a real weak spot. I'm not good at it. And actually, rather than going, I've got a fear of driving, that's why I don't drive. Think, actually, Claire, well done you. For not being like that other person that says, oh, I've got a fear of driving too, Claire. And I don't like it, but I still do it. I've had that, I've had that. Well, every time you get behind the wheel and you know you're not confident, or you know you've got a fear, then shame on you. Because when you're behind the wheel of a car, you're in charge of a big machine that can kill and maim. Not just yourself, but others. So actually, well done you for saying, that's not my thing. Well done you for saying, I'm gonna get a bus. I'm gonna get a train. I'm gonna be driven. I'm gonna use a taxi. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna plan my life and live my life around that. Do you see the difference? And that is something I have not shared for years because society says you should be ashamed of yourself because you're not behind a wheel zigzagging all over Lincoln or Leeds every day, all day, like everybody else is doing. And in actual fact, it's just about listening to your body and listening to who you are, listening to your strengths and your weaknesses. Why is it? Why as a society have we got a problem with weaknesses? Why have we got a problem with saying, I'm rubbish at driving? Or I am, you know, I'm rubbish at cooking. Or I am, I'm no good in a crowded space. I'm, I can't go to football games or matches or whatever you want to call them because I don't like being surrounded by, what's wrong with that? Why have we started to force ourselves into things to fit the societal requirements or what the matrix says we should be doing? That in itself is saying, actually, I'm a person that is prone to anxiety in different circumstances. So I have to plan my life accordingly. Why is that a weakness? Why is that not a strength? Think of the person that says, I said to you, let's go to a concert, me and you. I mean, another story, Liam Gallagher, log that in my head so I don't forget it. I'll come back to Liam Gallagher in a minute. These tangents are amazing. Think of the strength that is in, all right, you've invited me to that concert, Actually, I can come, this is gonna come on to Liam Gallagher, but in fact, I, let me share that, let me share the tale of Liam Gallagher. So, 2017, 17, yeah. Liam Gallagher came to Leeds and I just got into Liam Gallagher. So he's a big rock star in, 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 in the UK, United Kingdom. 
drugs and shenanigans and all of that. I'm not into drugs, by the way. But anyway, Oasis, Liam Gallagher, it is what it is. I'd never been to any kind of gig like that ever. My husband had. So we're driving up in the taxi and I was like, oh my God, drug vans, drug dogs, riot vans, drugs, for everything you can imagine. Everything you can imagine. And I was like, I got in the, I was in the taxi, I says, I can't do it. And again, that voice came in and says, step. And it was just after the bombings as well, the Manchester bombings. And that voice came in and said, step by step. So my first focus was just to get out of the car and just to stand on that straight. Then I saw Costa, so I went in, had a wee. That was my first focus. And then I just came out and I just stood on the pavement and I said to myself, at any point, I am in charge and I can leave at any point. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on it step by step. So I focused on just stood on the straight and looking and watching and people watching. Then it was back in the days when before you went into the gig, you had to have your bags checked because it was just in Manchester. So you were stood outside for ages, waiting, ages. So I used that time to talk to people because I'm one of them people that talk to strangers. I do, I've done it all my life. Um, and actually because I was so present in my body and because I was so present of managing my feelings and my reactions, I noticed that Lennon Gallagher walked past me. Nobody else noticed that. Nobody else noticed that because they were all too busy. Woo! I noticed that Lennon Gallagher walked past and he walked straight in. And that night he was photographed on Instagram with his dad in late. And then I thought, I'm just going to focus on handing my tickets and getting my bag checked. Then I'm just going to focus on walking up the escalator. Then I'm going to focus on getting a glass of wine. And, and that's what I did. And then when I went into it and it was like, whoa, I knew that I was in a weird book tickets that were away from the rabble. We weren't down in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, hells. Do you know what I mean? We were up on the, what's it called? Anyway, we weren't too far in neither, but I still knew at any point I could leave. And I knew that. And I felt that and I embodied that. And you know what? It was the best concert I've ever been to. I felt it and I'll tell you now, I'll tell anybody that asks that I felt terribly anxious, but I managed it. Not with suppressing it, not with pushing myself out of my comfort zone and making myself ill, but by managing each step and owning how I felt and making changes in each moment and being and using the presence of anxiety to make changes and be present with yourself. To a point, I actually had a really good night and I actually didn't want to go home and I was like, woo, at the end of it. So, there is power in anxiety. There is power in being able to manage yourself and your reactions and not letting stuff, noise, other people's presumptions of you affect your life and affect your well-being and just allowing yourself again, you know, there's a big thing, so much toxic positivity. Uh, oh, you're angry. What's made you ang angry again? There's so, there's so many reasons why there's so many issues at the minute because as humans, feelings are dirty. It starts at childhood. Feelings are dirty. People don't want to see a child that cries. They don't want to see anger. They don't want to see anxiety. So we suppress all this down. Whereas just saying, you know what, I'm really angry right now and just feeling that anger. It, 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 it flows. Whereas when you try and bottle it up, it festers and it festers and then we blow. So make peace with your feelings. Make peace with anxiety. Make peace with the fact that actually life is difficult for many at this time. For all of us, for different reasons and different times and different moments. And that we're going through a lot. We're going through a lot. There's nothing wrong with feelings. There's nothing wrong with... You know, sit down after this video and think, right, okay, yeah, well, I am a person that has moments of anxiety in my life. But I've just realised, listening to that video, I can manage it and I can make a change. I can make changes accordingly. Um, another example in London, we went to Harrods, loved it. Food court, I loved all that. I love all that kind of with the chocolates in the glass cabinets and I love all the pastries and patisserie. I love all that. Went upstairs, into the, went upstairs into the escalator and it was just horrific. I felt like the walls were closing on me and I went, I'm done. 
I'm feeling anxious now. The walls feel like they're coming into me. I need to leave. And, and we walked out. Took us a while to find out, but I knew that I'd made a decision, that I'd, I'd read the energies, that it was actually healthy to read the energies, and that I'd made a decision to leave for my empowerment. And it took me some time to come down, but I just kept walking. And I kept saying to myself, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe. It's a reaction. Again, Harrod is full of narcissism and ego and all kinds of stuff. And all that sad history with having all fired, losing his son and all of that. You know, if, if you're sensitive, if you're sensitive to energies, you can feel things. So you're probably on this channel because you are sensitive to energies. So straight away, you're sensitive. But you're not as in, oh God, aren't you sensitive? As in, I'm sensitive to energies. You know, you don't want to be the person that puts your hand straight into the fire. You want to be the person that goes, oh, that's hot. Wow. Ooh, okay. So that's my waffle for today. Um, not facing your anxieties, but not running from them. Not running from your feelings and your experience and your. Tra you can take this into your tra into traumas, into a life story, and the people that you've been in love with, and the people that have broken your heart, and all of that kind of stuff. Just don't run from it. Say, you know what? I've been in love with some right tinfoil twats in my time. <laughs> tinfoil twats. I went to say, what was it? A, a twat on, what is it? A language, Claire. Something about, a, I don't know. It's a knight in shining armour. No, it's not a knight in shining armour. It's a, it's a tinfoil on a, tinfoil twat on a horse. Anyway, it's something like that. You see what I mean? You can laugh about it. It's to actually sit down and go, yeah. Make peace with it. And only you can do that. No therapist, no healer, no shaman, no mystic can make peace with your past. Unless it's you. There's only you that can do it. And you can have hundreds of healing sessions, therapy sessions, but unless you're really willing to go, whoa, I get it. And actually, I don't need to be perfect and flawless. You know, we've got a very famous princess at the minute that's put pressure on herself to be, to be flawless and perfect breaking point you don't want to be that you don't want to be that person and people also do it to their children as well which is why we've got such an issue with with um anxiety within the young as well because so many young people are under so many pressures parents don't want or some parents don't want them to just have a job they want to have their job their, their past exam they don't want them to be who they need to be you know years ago your grandparents and great-grandparents wouldn't have had the pressures that kids of today in school having to pass that exam. You know, when you got a B back in the 90s, people were like, whoa, you've done well, you've got a B there. Now, unless it's an A star, they don't want to know. And actually think of the pressure that does to you. What if there's a child that wants to be a checkout person? And they said, girl then, be a checkout, work behind a checkout, and they're going to love that. What if there's a person out there that wants to be self-employed and open a flower shop? What if there's a person out there that does want to be a dustbin person? <laughs> what I'm laughing at person not saying, because you used to say dustbin man. And they're not allowed to because mummy and daddy say, no, you've got to do that job. So this isn't just something you can do with yourself. This is something you can bring into your children and talking to your children about it. Um, managing it the healthy way so you don't lose your empowerment is the way to go, is the way to go forward. Anyhow, today's chat is done. I will think about when I can do that video this week on, because um, I am seeing it so many times, this toxicity within the spiritual, within some aspects of the spiritual community, name with a new age. And I'm going to be going into some of the labels that are out there and how they can, in fact, I'm going to go big time on this video. We're going to do it this week. Some of the labels that are out there and the toxicity behind them, the narcissism behind them. And yes, we're going to do it because I think I think we need to have this conversation because it's getting crazy. It's absolutely horrible. Um, thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Keep your eyes peeled for information in the, in the um, community section on when the live will be. And I think what I might do is I might do a Reiki share as well on here, where I basically sit here and do some Reiki for everyone. So all you have to do is watch it, 
watch the adverts because it's free content and you'll be receiving Reiki. But well, I'll get all that over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Love to all. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.